Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. There is another thing that I want to talk to you about. It has been pointed out that I already did a series here on Erlengratz. Um, hardcore series will be built up from absolutely nothing. And we kind of carried that on here now. We're doing the stuff that we're doing at the moment with the sheep and so on. Now, I was kind of thinking that the target for this series would be to have a tailor shop. So we're producing our own clothes. Uh, say we got to produce 5,000 litres of clothing. So if you go and have a look in here, we would bring our wool down and turn it into fabric. And then the fabric gets turned into clothing in here. Construction, production, factory, carpentry. We've got one that we can buy in town. They're always the same prices though, so we can um, do that. We buy the spinnery. It's going to cost us 60000 Isn't that the one that's just across the road from us? And then that outputs the fabric right there. That's, that's 60 grand. And then the tailor shop takes the fabric and outputs clothes. So I was wondering if maybe the target for the series should be something simple. Like 5,000 litres of clothing completed and then we call it quits and we move on. Um, it has been suggested by a couple of people now that the no map, there is two maps currently. There's Cal Calmston, I think it is. Calmston Farm um, by Auction David. That one is, is it Auction David? I think it's Auction David. Um, that one is just recently released. It's set in the UK. So there's the Calmston Farm map that is out didn't really think that was a suitable one for the hardcore series and then the only other one is the no man's land map that's got a very tiny plot of land that you own in the middle and nothing else and um, you've got a few beat up old bits of machinery stuck in a shed and i thought that that could be a map that would make for an interesting hardcore series i don't know what people want from the hardcore this time though I, I don't know if you want me to stay on here for a while and um, build up past just uh, like building up and getting a tailor shop going do you want me to work on through that and go for another goal or would you like me to sort of move on would you want me to do the no man's land map or would you rather I waited we played this one for quite a bit longer well I say quite a bit at least an, you know another couple of months at least and a couple of months, probably three or four months. Um, just play, you know, play this one longer until we get some other map options and then we pick something from there. So I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions on that one. I'm not putting that exclusive as an exclusive question on Discord. Um, maybe I'll put the map choice up on there this time round. Um, ask for a few map suggestions and then the final result will be picked by the members of the Great Book of Names. Um, so I'm just for the moment wanting to get an idea of what people would like from the hardcore series as we progress through all of the FS22 content that we're going to be producing. Do you want to experience new maps and that or are you happy for me to stay here for quite a while? What sort of maps are you looking for? Is No Man's Land something that would interest you? Get into the comment section, light it up. Let me know what you think. This is your chance to have your input. Now, we have just completed the contract. So while he is struggling on up that hill, I'm just going to go here and here. And plowing is now completed. So I'm going to collect that for another 4,340. With the 15,000 right there, if we were to go and sell the rake that we currently have, we would be able to go and buy the bigger rake, but that would set us back in regards to getting the money to buy a wrapper. Because if we can buy a wrapper before we start mowing, we can get the extra 7,000. I mean, if we could find another rare truffle, then we could do it that way. There's still a few to be found. Uh, we, we've, got a, we've got a couple of options here. If we can find some of these things, then we have the... I was going to say, why aren't you coming off it? Sometimes they take a while to unhitch. 
Oh! I love that they do that. I really do. Look, see? When you go to unhitch, they put the jack down. Some of them do it faster than others, but this is quite an old machine, so it takes a long time to wind those jacks down. Um, and that's, really, that's a really nice touch, that. It's taking long times to wind the jack down. It's like you, you unhitch everything else, and you, you have one person just assigned to winding the jack down. And if it's ever so slightly rusted or you know not fully probably greased up there as well it takes even longer and um yeah you could be a full five minutes doing the jack and everything else is done and dusted and people are wandered off to have a cup of coffee while you're still winding the jack down it's quite amusing now let's not go whizzing off down the hill there is a little bit of forestry we could do but i did ask as an exclusive question um, if you would like to see me doing very much forestry, if we should be like clearing large patches of trees and so on with the bigger forestry equipment. And there was a resounding no on that one because we did do some forestry last time and we did loads of forestry on Hardcore 1 before. It was almost all forestry. So there was a resounding no as regards to forestry. So we will leave the trees alone and we will focus on the big open spaces that we've already got. Um, Although I was eyeing up those trees as a potential source of income. But, yeah, we don't really have anything to easily go and get trees. Because if you look at the forestry equipment, like, we've got to lay out a load of money to be able to go and do anything with them anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, we've also got the um, auto-load uh, timber runners now as well. Um, just really recently released onto Mod Hub, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's another significant investment if we want to go into there. So I want to just quickly look at these. Water is fine in there. Water, yeah, don't know. We can wait until tomorrow at least. Um, they've got three months. Oh, they've got six months to go before they're fully grown. And um, these are only a month old. So we've got eight months to go with... Oh no, seven months to go with them. So in six months' time, all of our sheep will be full grown and we'll be getting wool from all of them, which would be absolutely brilliant. The other thing I just wanted to take a quick look at for water levels, uh, that one and that one. You know what? Let's do a little bit of water carrying, shall we? We'll run... Because we, both the greenhouses could take a full tanker of water. But what we'll also do is we'll just start fast watering time now. So I'll go 10, let's go 15 times speed. Is there another contract we could do? To maybe earn just a smidgen more money. Those aren't worth it. I'm not getting involved in another bailing contract now. It takes too long. Um, the plowing jobs that we've got left are quite small plowing jobs. So I'm not going to do those. The sewing jobs, I don't want to get involved with them because we've got to be carrying stuff around for them. So no, we won't do any more contracts at the moment. I don't think it's worth getting involved with them. We will run in here and drop in a bit of water. And we'll do the same up top. So I'll go in here like that. We need to go right up to the end. There we go. Start unloading the water into there. There's a little bit gone into that one. And I will reverse out round this way. up along the top we we'll put some water in there and then we can drop some water into the greenhouse as well we've probably put two lots into the greenhouses i would have thought that in there right so we've got six thousand liters that we can just run down to the greenhouse very quickly and then we'll go back we'll get one more tanker load and we'll put that into the greenhouse as well and then as the greenhouse is dealt with for a minute everything is dealt with We've sold everything that we can sell for a minute as well. We're doing we're, we're doing okay here. Yes, we do want to get a third greenhouse, but we're not going to worry about that for a minute. We have other things that we want to do. So I'll be back in round here. Get that one unloaded, and then I can go and fill up another one. I need a drink. Uh, that one has left me with 400 litres of water. Swing them around this way and unload that into there. So, what will be like in this one? This is 13,000. I'll go and fill this one up as well. Uh, fill up the tanker once more so then I can dump a load into that greenhouse. That should be all of it then. 
We've got our new tracks that we're using now. And they seem about right. The way we've gone and put these tracks out. I like this. This is actually really good. I'm quite pleased. I'm pleased with this the, the, the work that we did we did here. I, I think this is this has worked out quite nicely. Maybe the only other thing that we want. Because rather than having to go all the way up past the sheep each time. Ooh. You know what I didn't think about? When we go past the sheep. Just while that one's filling up with water. We're going to see if we need to put any food in for them. They've got no bales here. I could take one load. Unload into the sheep. And take it down there and empty in the greenhouse. Cycle round. And then take the second load. Up to the next lot of sheep. Instead of having to shunt around with the sheep. That could make life a little bit easier for us. I mean... I, I, I don't know. It, it, maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. And um, we'll drop that one down there. Right. That bale is... 139 litres left. 730 euros for the water. I have been told for this series and also the time-lapse series... That I can go and you get free water from in the rivers and so on. I don't even know if I can in this one. I think I may have talked about it in this one. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't talk about it in this one. Um, I don't think there's anywhere along here that I can reverse in to get free water anyway. And there's no other ponds on this map. I suppose I could go all the way over there for free water. But most places in Europe are going to be like here in the UK. Even if you own the land, you are not automatically granted the right to extract water from any river or stream. Because if you are... Ex just think about it. If you've got a stream that runs through a hundred different farmers' land, um, so you've got a hundred farmers have this stream pass through their land. If they're all extracting water from it, there isn't going to be a lot of water left in that stream by the time it sort of passes through all 100. So in order to regulate that, you have to get a license to be able to extract water. And it is very tightly regulated how much you are allowed to extract. And you have to pay for the license anyway. So it doesn't matter if, we would, if we're doing things accurately here in Europe. Um... At least here in the UK, and I know several countries in Europe do have these rules and regulations. I know not all of them do. I'm just going to make the assumption that here in the Swiss Alps, um, these regulations would be in place. So I'm making a little bit of an assumption here. I haven't properly checked it out. But mm, there are quite a lot of countries in Europe that do have these regulations. You've got to pay for the license. You've got to pay an extraction fee. So you're going to pay for your water, regardless of whether you're hooking it out of a pond on your own land or if you're having it piped in. Yes, it will cost a bit more to have it piped in, but do you see a pipe here anywhere? I don't see a pipe here anywhere, so I'm calling this a borehole. I'm saying that we've got a borehole here and we're extracting the water from our own land. Um, so we've got to pay a license to be able to do that, and there's only a set amount that we're allowed to extract each year anyway. It's, it is regulated and limited. So you, you have got to be careful how much you take out. I don't know how much a license is. Um, I don't even know if you... Um, like, whether it's a one-off license that you never pay again, or if it is an annual fee. I just know that you have to have a license, you have to get permission, and it's something that is reviewed on a regular basis. How regular, I couldn't tell you. Right, let's shut that one off. There isn't really a lot else that I want to do at the moment. We could go... Let's get a bit of rest, shall we? It's been a busy day. We've done a lot of stuff. I was told, actually, in here, because you just you walk up to the door and you, you click it. I was told, if you go in here... Yes! Someone said there's a bed in here, and if you click on it, you can actually sleep. Uh, you, you can use the bed. I don't know if we can sleep in the bed, but the bed is something that you can interact with. The bowl of fruit that we can interact with. Can we interact with anything else? There's the door there. Gives us access to the dunny. That's so cool. I can't get in there. Right. That is really awesome. <laughs> Got a fold down bed and everything. This this hut is really, really cool. I like it. 
I wonder if the fact that we've got all of these moving objects in here is why we can't sculpt the terrain around it. That might have something to do with it. Don't know. Anyway, we're going to take a short break and we're going to rejoin you at the beginning of May. There's a little bit of rain, which is good. April showers and all that. We, we need that. We need that rain. This is quite important. And it's May. Doesn't look a lot different now, does it? What are we going to want to do? It was that area there I was thinking of mowing, wasn't it? Uh, first up, let's go and check the forecast. We have got rain this afternoon. And I don't know when it's going to rain there. So, there is one thing that I would like to have. There is, it does help with forecasting. It gives you a longer range forecast, and I actually think it's quite useful. So, let me just slow that one down. We could go and make our hay today. It's a little bit unrealistic, I find, that it gets rain, you know, that you can make the hay in a single day instead of having to leave it for a whole day. But we've got a forecast up until 7 o'clock this evening. We can't see what the forecast is tomorrow on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. We can make it go a bit further. So we've only got 7 o'clock this evening, haven't we? Let's double-check that. Yeah, 7 o'clock this evening. So if I go into here, and I go into here, and I go to Construction, and I go to Tools right there. Oh, good gravy. I didn't realize it was that much. A weather station improves the weather forecast available to the farm. This will take us through until tomorrow morning sometime. But that's 4,200 euros. That's a lot of money for a little bit more forecasting. Yeah, I, I thought it was about a grand. Okay. I'm rethinking that idea. I'm thinking that maybe we don't want to do that. And that we will wait a little bit longer. How are we doing? Food is absolutely fine in there. And water as well. Same up this way. Food and water are absolutely fine. That the food is, is still completely full on that one. Uh, nothing else that we need to do. Honey over here. We got 10 litres of honey now. We're cooking on gas now. I don't think there's a lot else. 22,000. Am I going to... I'm not going to be able to get another 10,000. Right? I'm not going to be able to do that. So now we want to have a look at our hay prices in here. It's currently 52, 54. November is when it's highest. April, May is where we are at the moment, and it's near rock bottom. We're not going to get a huge amount of money for this, but we can't make silage. What we will be able to do, though, is if we can make our hay now, we can sell that. That should be able to get us enough to get a wrapper. And silage, we make it in August. It should be ready to sell in September or October. We're then going to want to be able to grow wheat. And we plant that in September and October. So, so long as we can sell our silage before the end of October, then we should be able to start doing some plowing up the top. Actually, we don't need to do plowing, do we? Because it's already classed as a field. This It's field. See? Field info. If I go up here into, the tr in, into this area, this isn't field here. So, although... It has a needs plowing there, out on here. This is this is already classed as a field. Let's go and have a look. It does say that it needs plowing, and if it needs plowing, you do get a yield hit on this. So we don't have to go plowing right there. Uh, improving yield... Liming, fertilizing, removing weeds. No. More expensive. Great. You can also use increase the yield for the next harvest. It doesn't say how much. Huh. It does with these. 23% bonus. Lime. 15%. Rolling. Oh, that just gets rid of the stones. Oh, it does... it. An additional yield bonus. It doesn't tell you how much, though. 
I don't know how much we lose by leaving that needs plowing on there, but we, I mean, we'll lose a little bit, but not a massive amount. Anyway, I think we'll just get going with the mowing. It's, we, we, we've got time now. We're not going to be able to get a wrapper at the moment. Um, so we're going to just get the mower hooked on. We will get the mowing started. We're going to head up to the meadow at the top so that our bales don't roll away too far and we can do things from up there. So let's get that one on. Right there. And bring this on back. I don't know how this tractor is going to cope with these. Our tractor could do with repairing as well. Actually, let's do that a minute. We have we, we are able to do that. So we want to come over here like this and then we have N for the options in here. Condition to repair that tractor is 2,300. We really do want to repair it though because that makes a difference to the performance of the tractor. It costs a bit of money. But uh, it it's, does, does cost money, but it's worth it. So we're going to take this one on up here. It'd be nice if they had a second tractor, I suppose, to run some of the small stuff, like be able to do the, the tedding, and then we could like do tedding and raking at the same time. We're going to head on up this way. And just the brow of the hill right there, that's, that's basically where we're heading for. And I'm going to do an area right here. I'll go to the right-hand side of that tree. We need to go anywhere else, I don't think. So we'll start that one up and start that one up there. And then I go control V and that should lower them both down. One after the other. It's a little bit strange how we don't have a PTO shaft onto the front mower. The back one's got a PTO shaft on it, but the other one doesn't. And we start mowing. Going downhill, the tractor is absolutely fine. Doesn't seem to have any problem with that. I'm not going to sort of head down that hill very far. I just want to sort of bring it over this way. We'll go down towards that bridge a little bit. Going around there like that. There's no point in being greedy with this. I don't want to go down towards the bridge too far because it starts to get a bit steeper down there possibly it's going to get rough ground as well. we'll take this on up this way like this. Okay, he's doing okay so far. Even going up the hill as steep as it like it's, it gets a little bit steep over on this side. I'm not going to go too close to that bank either. I'm going to stay below the bank here. Probably for the best. And I'll run it on up this way. We'll go on the right-hand side of those bushes there. I was wondering about taking out a bigger slice, but I think this is going to be a big enough slice. Take it out to here. What we can do is if we think that, you know, we've got time and so on to be able to go and do a bit more mowing here, then we can always have another go we, we can always like mow a, a bigger strip so if I well for a minute I might as well just do this myself because um, I haven't really got a lot else that I can do I keep I haven't got another tractor that I can get started doing the tedding with and the tedding is the bit that's going to take longer like we, we, it, it will end up taking a bit longer to do that than it will to do at least do the mowing the rowing up as well is another job that we want to look at. So maybe we want to think about getting another tractor up here. Like a, just a small tractor. But I, I don't really know what sort of tractor we should be going for. Now, previously, I had a really small tractor that was working on our farm. We had a little electric tractor. We had another little tractor that was, I think it was a Deutz or a Kramer or something. I can't remember now. Right. I'm just going to go and get that little bit that I missed. I think there was another couple of little clumps that got missed there somewhere, but I don't worry about them too much. And there was a couple of clumps back on the corner when I was turning around down the bottom that we missed as well. We'll pick those up on our next time round. Could put hired help going in here. I won't worry about it yet. 
a bit, well, we, we, we'll test the hired help in a minute and see if it does work. See if this is properly counted as field. There's no reason that it shouldn't be. There's absolutely no reason that it shouldn't be. There we go. I'm doing a slow circle like that so that I don't leave a strip of uncut grass in between the front mower and the back mower because it does have a habit of doing that. If you're turning to the left, it won't. If you turn to the right too sharp, then you end up with a bit that's left behind uncut. I don't really want that. It's down on this corner down here that we've got some little bits of grass that we'll need to go and pick up. There, I can see one of them right ahead of us. So the little, there's a few rough patches here which are going to present some difficulties, I think, when we come to do our combining. Like the, some of these little, the, there's just a couple of rough spots there when we come in here to go and do arable crops well we're combining or doing any work with the not just the not just the combine doing the the, 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 the what do you call it, the sugar beet as well the sugar beet that's, that's also going to present difficulty so we're going to need to do a little bit of landscape work here in, in just in the odd place just to smooth things out a bit but that's actually quite realistic I think you know if, you, if you've got a field where you've got a really rough patch you're going to have to do something about it in order to allow your tractors and your machinery to be working in there properly. So I don't think that there's anything unusual about it. What we don't have, there is, I think, now some mods where you can use them. Uh, you've got, like, buckets and tools that you can use to go and do actual landscaping work. And I think that is quite cool. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if we will try it in this series. Um... But real life, like getting your tractor and your front loader going along and filling in um, bigger dips in a field that are causing problems for your machines, you would go and do that. Like, everybody would go and do that. So there's nothing wrong with us doing that as well. And that has a cost. You've got to use diesel. It's time as well. You've got to remember... That although the farmer may not necessarily draw a specific wage from his farm, he is his time is still worth money. And if you don't remember that your own personal time is still worth money, um, that's where you can start making mistakes with running your business, running your farm. Because you're not valuing your own time. You're not putting a value on your time. So if i got to spend time sorting out the, the dips and stuff in the field. I need to remember that that's actually worth money and I've got to assign a cost to it. If, I, if I'm trying to calculate the cost of running my farm and figuring out uh, what we're doing where and you know what bits we're losing money and so on, I need to assign myself a cost. You know, I'm putting in 30 hours a week on this particular task and it doesn't seem to be... You know, is it worth it? If my time is worth X amount per hour, is it worth the 30 hours a week that we're putting into it? Or would it actually be that it would be better to not do that task or do it differently and then assign those 30 hours a week to something that would be more productive? Now, most farmers that I know don't actually sort of approach the thing from maybe that particular angle, except for... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.